Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today I want to um, let you know I received a 100 amp 12 volt battery from I believe it is a Cuckoo and what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and unbox it to see what's inside. This one was just the outer box, this is the inner box. So, so far very good packaging. But we're going to go ahead and open it up, see what's inside and uh, run it through the rounds of some tests, as in capacity. Uh, maybe we'll do a, 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 max, a max draw test and make sure it can run uh, its max load for a good five minutes or so. And uh, we'll just look it over in general. All right, let's see what we got. Okay, we got a little bit of foam. And I kind of noticed right off the bat that these battery terminals are poking through the plastic and they're going straight into the foam, but the foam doesn't seem to be damaged. But it looks like it's in a nice plastic bag. Let's go ahead and just tear that open. And we've got a little bit of documentation here. We'll look at this after, uh, after we get the battery out of here. All right. And uh, this, was, this was it for the foam in the box, which, uh, it's a, it's a little on the thinner side, but it seems like it's protected it okay. Okay, first of all, uh, you notice that this is a metal case, which I thoroughly enjoy. It might actually be user serviceable too, because it looks like, it looks like this lid can come off. It does have nice beefy handles too, which automatically snap down so they're spring loaded, but it does make it real easy to carry. Uh, because it is a metal case, it is a little bit heavier than your typical uh, 12 volt, 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. Okay, I do like how uh, it has a lot of information right on the battery itself also. It tells you exactly what it is. It's a 12 volt, 100 amp hour. It's lithium iron phosphate. Um, again, battery capacity is 100 amp hour. Nominal voltage is 12.8, which is typical for these 12 volt batteries. And it tells you the total, total kilowatt hours, which is 1.28 kilowatt hours. Gives you the website and that it's a deep cycle battery and that it's made in China. Uh, also gives you some cautions about uh, charging regularly, do not short circuit, and do not disassemble, crush, puncture, or incinerate the battery. That would be bad. Okay, you see on the side, it actually has taped right onto the case uh, the, uh, the bolts for the uh, terminal connectors. And it looks like it has terminal covers too, which is nice. Um, I can tell already that these bolts, I feel like they might be a little shorter than some other batteries that I've tested, but we'll go ahead and check them out. Let's see the back side. Oh, actually the back side looks exactly like the front side, so I'm not sure if this is the front side or the back side. And yeah, so the sides look exactly the same. Again, another nice handle. Uh, but let's go ahead and check these, uh, check these connectors for voltage and see what we have. Let's go ahead and see what the battery voltage is. 13.34. So we do have voltage and 13.34 um, seems a little on the high side. I'm used to like 13.2, but that's what it is. So 13.34. Let's go ahead and check it again. Yep, 13.34. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and do a capacity test on this battery. So I'm going to go ahead and charge it all the way up to 14.6 and then we're going to run it all the way down to uh, 10.5 to see what our capacity is. And what I'll be using is the ZekeTech uh, battery tester right here. And before I start the uh, capacity test, I just want to show you the lugs that came with this battery. Um, I believe they are M8 bolts but they're a bit on the short side. Here are some M8 bolts that I got from just another battery, and this is what I typically expect. You can see the difference. I mean, it's only, I mean, it's probably only a, a couple of millimeters. I mean, but that is the difference between being able to connect, uh, have one connector on your battery and two connectors on your battery. Okay, I just want to show you that uh, the battery tester is connected to the battery which is in turn connected to my laptop. And what we're gonna do is first we're gonna charge it up to 14.6 and then we're gonna discharge it to 10.5. So 
So we're going to do a cycle test. And step one, we're going to do a charge constant voltage. Cutoff is going to be 0.1 amps. The current is going to be 5 amps. And the voltage is going to be 14 0.6 add step two we're going to wait for one minute add and then after that we're going to do a constant current discharge the current is going to be 5 amps the voltage is going to be 10.5 Add. Okay. Okay, let's go ahead and start. Okay, and you can see that our amperage is five, and our voltage right now is hovering right around 13.4748. Once this voltage gets up to 14.6, it will stop charging, it will wait one minute, and then it will discharge. So after that's all done, we'll see what our results are. Okay, uh, while this battery is charging and doing its discharge test, I wanted to go over the, um, the manual that came with the battery. And it's not really a manual, it's kind of like just two pages. And, um, it basically gives you a lot of precautions about the battery. Um, after looking at this manual, uh, I'm beginning to believe that this battery is not for the beginner. Um, these batteries would only be for people that know how to use uh, lithium iron phosphate batteries and what to expect of them. I mean, it tells you some precautions like, uh, you know, to fully charge the battery before you start using it or if it's been stored for a long time. Um, it says to pretty much keep away from water, from vibrations, if it's dropped, uh, don't dismantle the battery, and uh, don't charge or discharge with high current in a confined or small space with poor heat dissipation. But it doesn't talk about like what, what a high discharge is. Um, and nowhere in the documentation does it say what its maximum charge rates are. My guess is going to be that it can charge and discharge at a 1C rate, which means since it's a 100 amp hour battery, it can charge and discharge at 100 amps. So we are gonna go ahead and try to do a 100 amp test on this battery. Uh, also, it does come with uh, a section called charger, and it says don't place anything above the charger. It talks about the charger a lot, but this unit didn't come with a charger, so I don't know why that's in this manual at all. Um, it does tell you how to, uh, what you should do prior to connecting in parallel and in series, and it does give you a, a small diagram of how to connect in parallel and series, so that's a good thing. Uh, and then it also has like a little issue area where it says if there's no output, if the power indicator of charger does not line up, again, it didn't come with a charger, so I don't know why that's in there. Uh, and then also the battery pack could not be charged. Uh, the after sales service section of this manual, it does say that the product was strictly inspected before leaving the factory. Um, when the battery, it says, it also says when your battery fails, do not disassemble and repair it without authorization. And there are stickers on the case itself which would let them know that, uh, I guess, that you tried to fix it yourself. So when it comes to manuals, this one has a little bit to be desired. Uh, it doesn't give you the critical information. On the battery itself, it does say that the nominal voltage is 12.8, which is typical for lithium iron phosphate. But when it comes to the specifics of the BMS, like uh, what your max discharge and charge rates, uh, what your upper limit voltage should be and what your lower limit voltage should be. Um, I set my 
my test to be 10.5 because that is a a good low number to have for your BMS whether the battery actually shuts off before that um, I'm not sure of so maybe a little bit later I'll actually go on their website and see if there's more documentation on there but that is something that you shouldn't have to do because if they're gearing this towards people that are boondocking or live in RVs they might not have internet connection which you know they might not be able to access that online information all the information should be in the documentation that comes with the battery okay um, the capacity test is done and what this chart shows is that we started the uh, the charged cycle it took right around two hours to completely fill the battery up to 14.6 and I was only charging up 5 amps so that means that this battery had 90 amp hours in it when I received it and that's pretty high I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be uh, you know, no higher than 70 percent full for shipping purposes but please leave a message in the comments if that is incorrect uh, but then we started the discharge test and you can see that it's a perfect uh, lithium iron phosphate uh, discharge line and right here is where you can see that our capacity is 101.58 amp hours so this battery does pass the test of of the uh, 100 amp capacity uh, 100 amp hour capacity uh, rating so so that's a good thing and again the cutoff voltage it shows over here was 10.5 uh, I'm not sure if that is where the BMS shut off or not but uh, we can see that the voltage up here is 11.14 so that does kind of tell me that, that the BMS has not shut off so the, the disconnect for the BMS is probably lower than 10.5 alright we're going to go ahead and save this information and while the battery is in this discharge state uh, we're going to go ahead and take it apart because I want to find out what that jingling is inside of the battery case now if I were to get a battery like this now this battery was sent to me for review but if I were to purchase this and I the first thing I did was open it up and I heard loose items in the battery I would ship it back immediately I would demand a refund because we have no idea what that is and it could be a bar that could go across some terminals and cause a short it could be anything there should be no sound when you move your battery around so that's why we're going to open it up even though we're not supposed to we're going to go ahead and open it up and and see what is loose inside okay well I got this thing open and I believe I found out what was loose inside and it was this barrier right here that was it's uh I believe this is like what is this like far like carbon like carbon paper or car carbon uh, it's kind of like a, it's a plastic basically so it makes it so that the cells don't touch the side of the of the case and it had just become unglued it had it had just come unglued from the sides from the sides of the battery but if you want let's go ahead and take a look at the inside of this battery all right we have our uh, our BMS right here it looks like we have a uh, a seven gauge positive going to the terminal and then we have two 10 gauge wires going to the negative and then there's also a couple more 10 gauge wires going to the negative of the fourth cell and then here is the 7 gauge wire going to the first positive of the cells they are prismatic cells um, I am not going to take this apart any further to look at what type of cells they are here is the here is the backing that uh, came unglued which was making the sound um, I'm surprised that they didn't fit it because this side is screwed in right here so it's very secure but this one is just glued so I highly recommend that they secure that better because if someone gets a battery and they hear something clunking around they're automatically going to send it back 
but everything else looks like it's in order. I noticed that the BMS doesn't have any kind of uh, labeling. Actually, the label looks like it's been taken off because there's sticky film. There's sticky film right here, but there's no label. Okay, so I'm gonna put this thing back together, and uh, we're gonna charge it up, and then we're gonna do a. Uh, we'll do a hundred amp. Uh, we'll do a hundred amp draw to see if it can do it for five minutes. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, I found their website. And uh, if you want to go to it, it is akukubatteries.com. It has all the information you could ever need on these batteries. It has the description, uh, it has your warranty information, delivery, uh, it actually has some customer reviews. Uh, but the most important thing is if you scroll all the way down, it does show the, the specifics of the battery. Uh, the weight is right around 30 pounds, uh, it has the dimensions. Uh, usable capacity is 100 amp hours, you know, 12.8. Maximum continuous charge is 50 amps. Maximum continuous discharge is 100 amps. So once this is full, we're going to go ahead and do a 100 amp discharge test. Uh, and then it shows energy, maximum continuous load, um, which is 1280, which is a 100 amp discharge or a 1C discharge. Uh, normal use cycles, uh, greater than 4,000, uh, what it's really used for, the battery type, lithium iron phosphate, uh, maximum number of batteries allowed in series is four. Um, it doesn't say anything about a maximum of parallel. That really shouldn't matter, but I want to say most people just do four. And then uh, the operating temperature is uh, pretty much negative four to 113 degrees Fahrenheit. The standing charging and discharging currents is 20 amps. So it's nice that we found all this information, but it would be really nice if this information was also packaged in with the battery. So there was no question on what the maximum charge and discharge rates of the battery were. Because that's, that's pretty important information to know. Good morning everyone, and uh, I've given this Akuku battery a uh, full charge, and so we are ready to start the uh, max discharge test, which means that I'm going to run this at uh, around 1200 watts for about 5 minutes to see and make sure that the battery can sustain its 100 amp max discharge capacity. What we have is we have the Akuku battery connected to a simple monitor. Uh, this will show us right here the current that's flowing through the terminals. We have it connected to our 5000 watt inverter, which is more than enough power for 1200 watts. And then we have a 1200 watt heat gun plugged into the unit right here. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and turn this on. And the display reads that the voltage of the battery is 13.6. Output is 122 volts and we are at 60 hertz. So that is ready to go for our test. This monitor is actually showing 13.4 volts, but we don't really care about that. We care about the current right there. So let's go ahead and just crank this uh, heater up all the way and see what happens. All right, our current is at 109 amps. And let's let this run for five minutes. All right, we just hit the five minute mark and it is still running this heat gun with no problem. There is absolutely no heat coming from the battery itself. The terminals are just a tad bit warm, but nothing to be concerned about. Yeah, and we're still running at 105 amps. So let me go ahead and turn this off, and as soon as I turn it off, you'll see the voltage jump back up. There we go, and it jumps back up to 13. So it did exactly what it's supposed to. Okay, so what are my final thoughts on the Akuku 12 volt 100 amp lithium iron phosphate battery? Uh, well, I'm kind of mixed about it. Um, 
First with the, the positives, uh, performance wise, it was right up there with how it should be uh, for being a 100 amp battery. Uh, it gave us 100, over 103 amp hours, which is, which is perfect. Uh, when it came to the uh, max amperage discharge test of 100 amps, uh, it discharged 105 amps uh, easily for five minutes without any, any showing of heat buildup on the terminals or anything like that. Um, I also do like the metal case and these big, nice beefy metal handles. Um, and also I do like the fact that these terminals are raised up. I, that's just a preference of mine. It just makes it easier to be able to connect, uh, connect items onto it. Um, and also it, with it being a metal case, uh, the option of it being serviceable, uh, I do like that, even though in the documentation it does say to, uh, to not service this battery. And I'm guessing that if you do unscrew these metal bolts, uh, your warranty is going to be voided. That's why there is a sticker over that middle bolt right there. Um, when it comes to the downsides of the battery, first of all, I mean, these M8 bolts that came with it are little stub nose they're sh they're short compared to every other battery that i've tested uh you know if you're gonna if you're gonna purchase this battery i would suggest uh only having one connection onto this battery and having this battery maybe connected to a bus bar uh secondly when i pulled it out of the packaging um it was at 13.34 volts which i felt was a bit high in comparison to all the other batteries that i've uh reviewed and and when I did my capacity test uh, when I charged it up to 14.6 it only took two hours at five amps so that means that the battery was right around 90 percent when I received it um, now I read up on it and it's kind of unclear on what the battery should be when it's shipped but I read that it's, the battery cells should be around 30% for shipping purposes. And again, I'm not sure if that is raw cells, uh, because I also read that if it's in equipment, that it's permanently, you know, if it's in equipment, then that doesn't apply. But I still feel like 90% uh, is, is pretty high. Um, also, the big thing was uh, I could hear something loose inside the battery. Uh, now, the only reason I went ahead and continued with this review is because I could take the lid off and find out what's going on. And I did that and it just happened to be a little piece of fiberboard that, was, that had came unglued from the side of the battery. Um, so it turned out to be no big deal. But if your battery that you receive ever has something clunking around inside and it's not user serviceable, or in this case, it would, it would void the warranty, uh, you definitely want to contact the company and, and speak to them about it. In my mind, a, a battery that has something clunking around inside should be replaced rather than used. All right, with all that being said, thank you so much for watching this video. If you have any further questions about the Akuku 12 volt, 100 amp lithium iron phosphate battery, please go ahead and leave them in the comments and I'll be sure to answer as many as I can. Thank you so much for watching this video and have a great day. Bye-bye.